Hi, um, my name is Jordan and um, I'm making this video for multiple different reasons. Um, today I want to talk about my struggles and what I'm going through at the moment and also educate y'all on what tons of other people are going through that you may never guess. So I'm just gonna get started. Um, I've been healthy my whole life. Like I've got the flu maybe a couple times. I get science infections every now and then, but that's just normal. But it's been a good life and it, it's, it was my life um, until I got taken away from me. Unfortunately, in the summer of 2019, I had a meningitis scare. Um, I'd say in about around June and they thought I had meningitis. It probably was, but I was already on antibiotics to treat a sinus infection. So they think it cleared it up. So it didn't work when they did the spinal tap. So I was in the hospital for a few days for that. And then I got out of the hospital. I went to camp. Um, I danced. I started drill team practice. Like in the summer, I was dancing from like eight to four. Like I was fine after that one little issue until August 12th came around. Um, I vividly remember this day. It's the day my whole life changed. Um, I was at practice at Con Kane and I was just practicing a normal practice. We were doing tryouts for our Meet the Hurricanes dance. It was just a normal practice, um, practically. And um, I did, I ran the dance two or three times and the third time after I did it, I just couldn't breathe. Like my chest, I physically could not breathe and I was gasping for air. And so my coach came over and she called the trainer and the trainer was like, did you eat a lot today? And I was like, not really. So then we just thought like maybe I didn't eat enough. So the next day comes by, happens exact same. And I made sure I ate protein and all this stuff. And then we were like, something's wrong. Um, so I wasn't able to dance like I normally do um, because I couldn't breathe when I danced. Um, but I said, I'm dancing and meet the hurricanes. And so that comes around as maybe like the first week of school or something, I'd still haven't been having these breathing attacks all the time. And I danced on the football field. I have a massive breathing attack after. Um, my mom comes and gets me off the field. And yeah, I was just thinking maybe I have vocal cord dysfunction or something where like your vocal cords shut when they're supposed to open. And I was like, you know what? Like. I'll get through it because that has a cure. Like there's things that you can do to fix that. Um, so I wasn't really too worried about it. I was kind of frustrated at the time, but I thought that was bad. Little did I know that was just the beginning. Um, so this went on for a while. I kept insisting on dancing. And so I danced until the point where I passed out. Um, it got worse. Um, so I danced one day and I had a breathing attack after and I passed out at practice, but it was just like five minutes I was, or five seconds I was out and then I was back. And so no one was really worried about it because like that's kind of normal, um, I guess. And so then it started getting worse. Um, I had a breathing attack at a football game and I passed out for like four minutes maybe. And then I had a breathing attack or no, I literally went outside for Legacies after I insisted on doing this. They were like, Jordan, you're not doing it. I insisted on doing this football game. So I went out there and I didn't dance. I just walked through our forms on the field when we were outside and I'm walking to go back inside and I just fall over. Um, I think I was out for eight minutes then. Um, it's happened a lot, um, but the worst one, then I was told to stop dancing actually. Um, after that one where I fell outside, they were like, you need to stop dancing. And that just crushed me because like, that's the only reason I'm at Klein Kane in high school is to dance on this team. And it's all, it's all I love. That's all I want to do. <laughs> but they told me I can't do that right now and so I haven't been dancing for like two months maybe um, since I was told to cut it <laughs> I 
and I feel like a part of me is gone. And the worst part is I can't go and sit there and watch practices anymore because sometimes I would just fall over and pass out. I mean, I didn't like watching practices because I got to see all my friends do stuff that I love to do and wish I could do. But at least I felt like I was included and part of the team. But I can't do that. And I'm trying to remember, like, you're not dying. It's okay. But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let me get back to my story now, sorry, but then we had a football game, um, I passed out, ugh, on homecoming, um, uh, I just went out there and did homecoming ripples, like, stood there and shook my palms, um, I was outside for 10, or passed out for 10 to 15 minutes, they took me by EMS, um, hospital, oh, she's fine set me back um then on november 14th i passed out for 24 minutes in the nurse's office and looked like i was having a seizure um they called the ems called my mom i got taken from ems by school or from school to the medical center downtown um they kept me there till like night and then they um gave me some fluids and like we'll just get into this doctor which i couldn't get into till like november the very end of november um because luckily there was a cancellation um so i got in so that all happened um i really felt hopeless at the time because i didn't have dance um i just felt really lost and yeah but now what I have discovered um, is I finally have a name to this whole issue that I'm talking about. Um, it's called dysautonomia. What dysautonomia is, is a illness, a chronic illness, but it's invisible. So I may look like a healthy 15 year old, perfect normal teenager from the outside. Um, but in the inside, I look like a hundred year old grandma. So basically how to sum it up is parts of my body that all are supposed to work together um, to produce like my blood flow from my legs to my head. It doesn't work properly. So like all these parts of my body don't work properly so they can't work together properly. So there's not really like, oh, let's do this surgery or I'll put you on this pill. That doesn't help it. Um, which kind of sucks. Because you have to just hope and pray that something they do will work on you. Or one day it will just go away. I mean, there is no cure for dysautonomia. And it sucks, let me tell you that, because this illness has taken away my whole life. It has taken away me spending time with the people I love. I can't go to school. I can't, I'm missing going to eat with my family right now because I physically can't. I can't dance like I want to. I mean, if it was up to me, I would be dancing with my team i don't care if i pass out at the end i would do anything to dance with them yeah maybe some people on my team don't understand what i'm going through and some people like to make fun of it and like to say i'm faking it or people like to make up all these things they don't know what's going on inside because they can't be me and feel what it's like for my body to slowly just give up on me like i literally feel like sometimes I'll be like I feel like a potato and that sounds really weird but I do I just feel like a couch potato I sleep all day I mean sometimes I have to my boyfriend I can't even hang out with him because I physically 
can't get off the sofa. Or I physically can't wake up and stop sleeping. So I'm not here for y'all to feel bad for me. I'm here to simply educate y'all. The next time y'all wanna go look at someone and point at them, go up to them and corner them, maybe you should take a step back or think maybe there's something going on that I don't know about. Because I bet money if you go look on my Instagram page right now, you're gonna be like, this girl's perfectly fine. Actually, I can be somewhat decent for about 30 minutes to an hour on a good day. So yeah, I can go outside and take an Instagram photo. But that doesn't mean when I post it, I'm not laying in bed, not being able to get up. Don't make assumptions for something you don't know. Once again, I'm not here to be Debbie Downer. I'm just here because there's other people going through this too. And I know I'm not alone and I don't want them to think they're alone. Um, yeah, so I really just hope this helps you guys. Um, but I kind of need to go take a nap. So, bye. Mwah.